All right, what's up, guys? We are back with another podcast episode this week, and today we will be talking about Jack Sock signing with Selkirk, uh, MLP changing their venue last minute, uh, our friend Onik making a huge run. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, definitely not a woo. (laughs) Um, And then we're going to talk about some tournament partner dynamic stuff, and then make sure you stay tuned to the kitchen because I'm going to talk about how I have flown free for this entire year as well as my wife and will continue to do that in 2024. So if you want to learn how to do that, you can stay till the kitchen. Let's go. <sighs> All right, Will. Let's talk yeah. about this Jack Sock thing real quick. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Do you yes. have any immediate thoughts on it? I mean, it was inevitable, right? Well, I mean, all right, so when he came on the scene, weren't people saying, oh, he's going to be playing more next year? And I, I don't know. People were talking about it like it was it was a done deal. It was a matter of fact. But he kept on saying, no, guys, I'm going to be... St- you know, I'm still be playing tennis. I'm still going to be doing this and look at where we are now. And it's just like, we knew it. I almost feel like it's not a surprise, right? Is it a surprise to you? I, I don't think it's a surprise. I think I will just be the, the biggest question for me is how much will he practice or how much effort will he put in? It's very clear. He, he loves pickleball. He's said it a bunch. It's clear mm-hmm. watching him on a pickleball court. He loves it. But I just wonder after dedicating so much time to tennis and, you know, he I'm sure he has more than enough money now. Is it just yeah. like, well, I don't want to have to hit the gym every day, wake up at six to like go hit balls. Like I want to know where his uh, desire falls on that scale. Like if he puts all the same effort in, I'm really excited. If it's kind of going to be like a same query thing where it's like, oh, I'm just here and pick a ball. He shots that same query. How do you know same query ain't putting in work? I mean, he might be, but if he is putting in work, those results aren't showing up yet. <laughs> those the the gains are not visible yet. Oh my gosh! So speaking of you know tennis and Sam Query Jack Sock, this reminds me. I'm just normally I don't do this, but uh, did I tell you? I told you about the comment I had in one of my videos. So I, I made a little highlight reel of when they had the exhibition match, like way back. Well, when was that last? Was it earlier Sometime this year? Sometime last year. Yeah. Okay. Look. All right. You know what? I'm just going to I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to read this. I'm going to read this to you guys. Okay? Because <laughs> just hold on. Give me just It a was second. pretty funny. This was the most classic tennis player arrogance and then realizing like, "Oh shoot, maybe I'm wrong." Man, this guy was just I had to I mean, you know, I let him live a little bit, but you know, I I gave him a little perspective. All right, but basically, so um the thread started with somebody, I, I forgot his name, but he commented something along the lines like, oh, this is so easy, yada, 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 pros could become, you know, anybody could become pro in six months to a year. And although that may be not necessarily untrue, right, he was making it seem like it's so easy and that he could, you know, compete. Well, and I said, he said I, anyone that was a four or five tennis player could be pro in pickleball well, in well, six months. Right, right, right. Well, no, no, there, there's like two people in this thread. So ah. the first guy... The first guy said this, and I said, look, um, you're probably good. And if you practiced and you're a good tennis player, then yeah, you can compete. And maybe you can compete at the pro level, but to win, right? To compete and to win and have results, that's a different story, right? That's like, that's a tall claim. And so another guy responded and basically just said, so true. And I was going to leave it at that. I'm like, okay. Like he was agreeing with the, the previous commenter. But then he tagged me in a comment and he said, at Pickleball Will. Anyone who is a decent athlete could be a pro in six months to a year. I just refuse to play such a stupid game. I'm a 4 0 to 4 5 tennis player. When he said 4 0 to 4 5, I, I immediately, I was like, okay, all right, yeah, 4 0 4 5. Like, that's kind of a gap because some 4 0 players in tennis are trash. Like, you literally. already know he means 4 0, and on like his absolute yeah. best day, he can hit one serve at a 4 5 level. Right, right, exactly, right. I mean, I was like four zero to like four five. Anyways, tennis player, and he said, and he said, I'm a four to four five tennis player, and I've never played pickle ever, and I could beat any pickleball player. And I was like, okay. So I said, all right, player, don't sweat it, don't play it if it ain't for you. Because in my head, I was like, I mean, we don't want you anyways, because you're a dick. okay. Yeah. <laughs> if it ain't for you, but to say you can beat any pickleball player is also quite a claim. 
I too was a four or five tennis player and I made it to sectionals and nationals USTA from the mid Atlantic region. Right. And I, I said, um, uh, I consider myself a pickleball player now. I've been playing pickleball for like two plus, almost three years now. And I would say I'm a pickleball player. And our, and I said, are you still confident enough to say that you could beat me if our tennis skills was on par and I have two plus years more experience than you in a game you've never even tried, right? <laughs> and I was like, okay, he's not gonna say anything, but he actually responds back. And he says, he says, if it was a best out of five matches round, you would probably win three and I would win two. And then I was like, glad, I, I, I let him live. I was like, glad you at least have some perspective is how I responded. Who knows? You might secretly be incredible at the game and beat me 3-0 or lose 0-3. But since, you won't t but since you won't touch it, we'll never know. But I was just thinking in my head, wow, he went straight from I can beat any pickleball player to if we play best out of five, you'd beat me 3-2. And I'm like, okay. Like this, like switched real quick after I gave him some perspective. Like, bro, get out of my Every face. Every time, man. Every time, Every time, people are just ridiculous. Like, anyways. So that that brings back to the question of Jack Sock coming in playing, and sure, I mean we saw him play before in the exhibition match, and he did well, right? Yeah. And did he? He also played an actual PPA event where you know prize money was on the line and kind of prestige was more online. This wasn't an exhibition match. And he won He won mixed with Annalie Waters, right? He lost pretty horribly with- Annalie Waters could win a pro bracket with me. <laughs> <laughs> she could, she could kick me off the court and win with me. Right, all right. So not a big surprise there. Um, uh, and I guess he didn't do so well with Tyson. And I don't know if that was because of him or because of Tyson, because I don't quite remember that game. But he can compete. Let's let's be real. I mean, he's a yeah. world class athlete. You know, former top ten in tennis and also a top doubles player. So I mean, we've talked about this before, and yeah, he's going to be able to do good. And will he be able to win? Maybe if he finds the right partner, he'll do well. But I don't know. I don't know how serious he's going to take it. And honestly, I haven't read uh, comments or articles about how the tennis world is taking his transition into pickleball. I, I didn't you, even think about that. There's probably some hostile comments. And there's probably some haters for sure. But but here's what's really interesting. I believe that several of the pro tennis players have said, I can't remember if it's Jack Sock that mentioned this or someone, but they're basically like, yeah, there are a number of pro tennis players that like in the locker room are watching the PPA. Like, they, you really? know, they've talked about Tyson or whatever. Yeah, like... So I just, it, even they seem to at least like watching it. So I don't know. I, I don't really know why I brought that up. I just think we'll probably see more tennis players continue to come over. I don't think we're going to see a, yeah, know, some of the elite elite, but. I mean, Jack Sox pretty elite. I mean, like, you know, he's not in his, uh you know, prime days, but he, you know, he still could have made a few moves in tennis, but I don't know. It's tennis is getting so hard and. I don't know how old he is now, and I don't know how hard he trains in tennis, but man, tennis is hard, and pickleball is only getting harder, you know? Uh, you're going to have to put in some work, because I don't see him, I don't, I, don't see, I don't see anybody taking out the Johns brothers. If you're not playing pickleball, like, all the time, I don't see anybody yeah. taking them out, or even Dylan Frazier and J.W. Johnson, or even, you know, Riley and whoever he's being partnered with, you know, on a consistent basis if you don't train, because those guys train they play pickleball and the game is very nuanced and you need you know you need that training you can't just go in anymore and just expect to win it's too hard yeah the skill gap is just increasing so much right now does jock Sock does jack Sock have a good chance yeah for sure uh i mean look at his he has incredible racket skills incredible you know hand speed um i mean i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you right now I'm, I'm excited to see him uh make some moves hopefully he can you know kind of give some of the tennis players some uh more elite tennis players some some brownie points after the failed yeah. results from query <laughs> and yeah, Noah Rubin yeah. who went back to tennis yeah you know? yep so we'll see I don't what know. if what, we, what, see, what a, what if we see a third flop I don't think that's gonna happen but imagine if it was a third oh 
that'd be kind of rough. But I mean, it's, it's the thing is, it's there's not no really way, a flop. but it would just be funny. It would be funny, but it's not even that big of a flop because I mean, we we have tennis players, you know, yeah. high level tennis players. We don't have form. We don't have that many former tennis pros or very like notable um, tennis pros coming into pickleball. But uh, I just. I just know. I I, I kind of want him to, to really do well, just so they can get so they can kind of get a win. But there's a there's a the pickleball player in me is like I hope he gets molly whopped. Just, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. just so these 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 outside tennis players like that guy who mentioned I mentioned in my comments can shut the f up. <laughs> like, well, you heard too that the there's a rumor about we won't talk about this much because I I just only loosely saw the headlines. But you mean that the, the Brian, Brian Bros? Yeah, that'd be good. I heard there. I mean, I could imagine them being pretty good. I just I'd love to see that too because now you'd have another like tennis port over that were clearly incredible at tennis doubles. So there's oh, just yeah. like no excuse yeah. anymore if they're not good. You know what I mean? Like people kept saying, oh, "Oh, wait till we have really good tennis players come in." Okay, we had Sam, we've had Jack now, and then we might have the Brian Bros. Like you're not gonna get a Djokovic or Alcaraz yeah. to come over. Yeah. So it, this is about as good as it's getting. Yeah, it's about as good as getting. And then I think uh, Donald Young is coming into the game a yep. little bit. And I'm sure there's more. There's other, you know, uh, former pro tennis players that are coming onto the scene. I mean, uh, you know, Hurricane, you know, Tyra yep. Black, she was playing on the pro tour a little bit. So was even Colin. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I know there's more. I'm just like... It's just like it's not coming to mind. Yeah, my mind anymore. Uh oh, the girl named uh, Riza. I think I saw her at Beer City Open. She was like a top thirty, top like fifty doubles player on the WTA. Um, I mean, you know, Travis Rettenmeyer. Yeah, you know, he's the top one hundred doubles player, and I mean, he's doing well, but is he dominating? Yeah. No. Right. So, I don't know. Yeah, I just don't we'll think see. I don't think it's gonna happen. I don't think it's I don't think he's gonna be dethroning some of the top people that we have in pickleball right now. They're just they're all too good. Yeah, I guess we're yeah. gonna see. We'll see, but uh, we'll move on because we got a bunch to talk about. I'll go over this one really quick. Uh -huh. This is just such a stupid thing in my mind. Okay, so <laughs> MLP California, or what was supposed to be MLP California, is less than a month away. In fact, it's like from the time this podcast comes out, we're probably like three, three and a half weeks out from when it was about to start. OK, so I booked my travel last week. I'm like a month out. That's reasonable. If you want to yeah. be like really good about travel, you do two months or even more out. This has been on their website for a minute as far as I'm aware. And so I yeah. book it. I get all my travel and I'm going for. A couple reasons. I'm going to network. I'm going to see some friends. And then MLP was kind of my cherry on top. And then, you know, also get to network some more at MLP. So everything kind of worked out. It's great. Well, I book everything. And then I see that uh, MLP decided to change their venue less than a month away Ooh. to Dallas, where Nationals is going to be. Now, I think that makes a lot of sense for the pros. Keep all of them there so they don't have to travel for two weeks. They're at MLP, they don't have to travel to get to nationals, whatever. I think that makes perfect sense. But you should have figured that out a long time ago. Now, I understand the merger changed and the a lot of things. The merger, yeah, the demerger, the, the demerger merger, <laughs> everything. I get it. But also, just like how amateur is it to change your venue that last minute? And there were some other people I talked to, one of them being a pro that had already booked their travel mm -hmm. and was also annoyed. And I'm like, yeah, this is, I don't know. I just think it's dumb. I won't be at MLP now because of it. I'm just going to go to California, California and network with the people I was supposed to network with and then play a bunch of pickleball. I'm just going to be there longer than is necessary. Like, I probably could have made this a three, four-day trip, but I'm going to be there for like six days. So I'll kind of just be working out of an Airbnb in California and playing a bunch of pickleball. It'll be a good time. It'll be fine, mm -hmm. but I'd... Just MLP, get your stuff together. That's, I guess yeah. I won't be booking my trips until two weeks out in advance with MLP <laughs> in the future. Cause I guess that's the smart thing to do. So, All right, if they anyways. keep on changing. Well, now I might go to MLP. I wasn't planning on going to MLP. Uh, <laughs> but now you can drive. 
I mean, now I can drive. So I potentially might. I, I might still skip it. I don't know. We'll see. And also, like, you're not going to be there, so it's going to kind of suck. So I might just wait until nationals. Um, and it's just, like, a lot of Dude, time. Dude, if you went to away. MLP, you might as well just stay through the whole nationals that's at that right. point. Oh, right, exactly. And that's, like, do I want to do that? I mean, like, maybe I potentially could. We'll see. We'll see. But, eh. <laughs> but that sucks yeah. for you. I'm not going to yeah, lie. Yeah, stupid. I mean, I'm just glad it works out still, but it's just kind of, like, put, I don't know. Put, put, a, put a comment down below if you had already planned on going to MLP and this messed up your plans because we would just like to know how many people get a gauge, a pulse of how many people's plans got messed up. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, that was annoying, but uh, really quick, I'm just going to go over this. We did have one of our good friends, Anik Lohani, who the made it to assassin. Yo. Yes. The Congrats, backhand Anik. assassin. <laughs> he made it to the finals, played Ben. Uh, he's from Minnesota. If you guys watched my two handed backhand video, he was the guy that gave me the lesson in there. And mm -hmm. again, all the commentators would talk about during his entire run was his backhand. So if, well, you, yeah. if it's not clear yeah. yet, the guy's backhand, backhand is, is insane. Yeah. I told you, I, I mentioned this before on the pod, even with our interviews uh, with him, like when I came up to Minnesota and we played against uh, him and Omrik in the pros versus shows, that was, a, uh, that's, uh, that was actually a fun time. I really <laughs> enjoyed that match. But yeah, I mentioned this before. Sonic has one of the best two-handed backhands in the game. It has to be top tier, S tier, along with Connor Garnett and probably Annalie Waters. And then yeah. I think maybe a Riley. tier below. Yeah, yeah, Riley. Uh, yeah, Riley's is pretty good. I, I don't know. Would you, would it's you put pretty Riley? Good. It's, I mean, no, it is pretty good. I don't know. Would you? So you'd put them in the same, you'd put Riley in I'd S tier? Put him, I'd, I'd put him in the same tier. Okay. All right. All right. S tier. And then right below that, I would probably say Rafa Hewitt. Maybe Chris James? Olsen after his 15,000 backhands. Whoa. Let's <laughs> not go too far now. <laughs> what universe are we are we talking about? What universe are we in hey, right there's now? Some, there's some other dimension where I'm S tier. Look, look, look. If you want to be, be in one. that, if you want to be in that S tier, I need to see another video of like a whole 365 days of training the backhand something like that <laughs> okay yeah. then maybe mm. maybe we'll get it up to the s minus tier ah. but the <laughs> but the tier that you'll always be in is i mean you already know what tier that is that's yeah. right that's right um yes. but anyways real quick i'll just run through his results because the people he beat were pretty impressive he beat julian arnold 11 6 11 that 4 so that good. was a good match yep he he did work then he beat Brandon Lane, he lost 5-11, then 11-4, then 11-2. After mm. that, he beat Hayden, Patrick Quinn, who, who had hot, beat Fed. Yo, sh shout out yeah. to Hayden. He was hot that that tournament. He was just, he was wrecking face. Yeah, and hey, or, uh, Onik beat him 11-3, 11-2. I have no idea what happened there. He just mopped him Yeah, because I, I didn't get to watch that one. Then he beat JW 11-5, 11-8. And then in the final, he lost to Ben 3-11. 7-11 that last game he he did have a pretty good run um but you know ben just did ben things so that's i don't think we're surprised necessarily no we're not but he gave he gave ben a good run was the final all all the matches was it i guess i thought the finals was best out of five but it's no not, only for doubles not singles oh okay i think the pros all thought it was too much for singles which understandably so if you're ben playing best out of five singles and then the other two events that kind of sucks yeah yeah that makes sense makes sense yeah so yeah congrats to him excited to see onik do more hopefully he just eventually quits and goes full-time pickleball yeah and then we can see more <laughs> championship sunday do you remember in our podcast episode with onik and i oh, asked yes. him or we asked him we were like are you planning on going pro and he's like nah i like my job too much i just kind of want to play for fun here and there and look at this few months later look at it hey, he's going pro same thing for Omrik. Omrik quit his teaching job and is now full-time teaching pickleball okay all right so both so lied them. yeah they yeah lied i know us. right look yeah. you can't resist the pickleball bug everyone knows this like <laughs> i couldn't resist it so bad that i had to make it my job otherwise i was gonna fail to do my other job uh-huh uh-huh true true okay <sighs> yes all right anyways those are just some of our news and updates Will, I want to go over uh, what I thought would be a fun 
uh, topic this week, especially since you just got back from playing in a minor league event. And yes, that's just talking about tired. Yes. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Will, everyone, because he drove back today, which was several hours of driving and is now doing this podcast at 10 p.m. at night. So uh, give Will some props here. But I want to go over just partner dynamics, like what makes you uncomfortable with a partner? What makes you comfortable? What do you want your partner to do for you? Like, are there things that you find better or worse? Because this happens to me all the time, even just in mm -hmm. more competitive games here at like a league or something where there's you know more people i don't know but i have i definitely have thoughts about this and i thought it'd be great since you just played in minor league with some people that you didn't know so yes let's let's chat about it okay so what i look for in a partner is i mean first of all it's somebody who compliments my kind of game style i guess and i i don't know honestly it changes from from day to day sometimes i like to be the steady one and sometimes i like to be the one kind of like attacking or whatnot it's very i don't know it's, it's where it's very weird for me sometimes because for the most part i would say uh i play right side when i play with like better players i'm the right side player and yeah. part of that is because i'm not too incredibly tall and I don't have like a crazy reach. I do have a pretty decent forehand roll and flick. And surprisingly enough, when I play on the left side, I earnie quite a bit. Like yeah. I think to everyone's surprise how much I earnie because of, I guess, you know, my height. But um, I don't always like to do that. And I kind of like to be be steady, but I don't know. I, I definitely don't like playing the same side the whole entire match, which is a thing for me in, MLP it's like kind of like an issue because you know you play the same side the yeah. whole entire time this time around this tournament uh you know shout outs to my partners Katie Merrill and then my first time playing with Austin and his wife uh Jen Jenny Jenny Corley and we got silver and when I played mix obviously I played le left side and when I played men's I played right side so I got a good mix um but I want to play with somebody who's usually steady I prefer somebody who is steady versus someone who is streaky or someone who likes to you know speed up and play power like that is kind of my preference what about you uh yeah i mean i let's see honestly i don't think i even look at the play style so much for me it's a lot about the the personality and the type oh, of person they are i think chemistry. if it, now if i am gonna try and figure it out I, I like I similar to you. I like to play both. If I am playing with a better person, I'm fine playing the right. Like I will concede it without a problem. I don't have an ego. They're better. Like if I played with Isaac, I mean both my brothers, like Patrick's usually yeah. better than I am. So usually he plays the left. And Isaac's much taller than me. So I would definitely give him uh the left as well. So I don't have any problem playing the right. But for example, like when you and I play together, yeah, what I found is both of us can play either side and sometimes it's just better for one of us to do the other yes. side and we figure that out during the match and i do like that things are free flowing obviously if i'm on the left i can i can hit a yates which is my favorite yes. shot so it's nice to not have that <laughs> taken away from me um but yeah, to me i think it's a lot less of their actual play style and it's, and it's just about the person yeah because okay. there are people i have played with in like leagues where the entire time their body language when I mess up like an mm. overhead or a dink. Like as soon as I see that body language go negative, I get super in my head and then I play super conservative. And once I get in my head or play conservative, things go way downhill. Like shots that are super routine, I'm probably missing. Whereas like when I play with you, I feel super comfortable. Like I, I don't feel any judgment the entire time. If I mess something up, like I know you're not going to turn around and like, roll your head and be like, dude, how could you like uh, miss that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good. I'm really good at hiding it because in my head, <laughs> uh, you, three, five, uh, <laughs> crap. Yeah, I'm just you kidding. You are S tier at hiding it if you hide it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, true. All right, well, let's let's unpack this more. Let's let's go the personality and like like player, not, not, not play style, but player as a person route first so you like somebody who is you know that you can get along with essentially yeah. who has you know positive vibes 
positive body language. They're chill. Okay, no, I agree with that. And now that I think about it, yeah, if I had somebody who's just super intense all the time, hmm, I guess I don't mind it. Maybe not as much as you. Um, mm-hmm. But I think I would, you know, prefer somebody like that as well because I don't. I I think like for you. So when when that happens, if you play with somebody who is you know horrible body language, do you kind of shut down or do you try to bring them back up or is it hard for you to bring them like out of that rut? Like, can you do that? Are you a person who can pull somebody out of the dumps? Is what I'm trying to ask. I will try, but I feel like there are just some personalities, and, and this I'm more so talking about leagues. Uh, yeah. where like, you know, you're just mixing around with a bunch of different people on a weekly basis. Cause in tournaments, I'm very selective about who I play with. It's basically been you and my brother, I think actually ever that I've played with. Um, so I don't have a lot of experience for tournaments, but I'll try. But if I see their body language is consistently negative and like me trying to help or say something isn't doing anything, I I'll just give up. Cause I'm like, okay, like if you're not going to do anything with this, or at least like give me something back, then Mm-hmm. I guess we'll just get this game over with and I'll go to the next guy. Gotcha. I see. I see. Um, I'm also, for, for me, I I think I like somebody who is open, more open-minded to try yes. new things, right? And, and to not give up on a strategy uh, or a plan that we kind of formulated on the fly and it fails. Like the first starts, oh, it doesn't work. And then we revert yeah. back to something else, right? I want to. I want somebody who's open minded to try it a few times before we move on, because sometimes that's what you got to do. Because you don't know if it just didn't work this time because you executed the plan or the play poorly, um, uh, or they just. And, and sometimes it's hard to tell if your opponent is just playing super hot and playing super streaky, and uh, they were able to combat that strategy at that point in time. So somebody like that, but also there is kind of a uh an advantage to playing some with someone that you know how they play and they kind of do the same thing in almost every situation and Mm. if i have an answer for that or if i can insert myself into the play that makes it easier because i it's almost like i can see the future i was like okay he's gonna do this i'm gonna be ready right here with my counter or i'm gonna hit this kind of dink and i know he's going to drive it here or she's going to drop it here so that is kind of nice because then it it makes it easier for me because i know what's going to happen right yeah and i don't know if you feel the same way yeah definitely i i definitely it's if i know like i mean just even using you as an example like i feel like i know your game well enough to be maybe not predict exactly what's going to happen but i have a general flow of what's about to happen and where i should probably be and having that (laughs) is really nice but yeah. as long as someone's Will's gonna drive it, he's never gonna <laughs> speed it up. All right, get ready right here to speed it up right here. And if I can't get it back, Will will come over and finish it. That's oh, right. Here comes a scoop. Here goes, <laughs> yep, there we go. Yep. Our Will's gonna ace him right here. Oh, he might miss this next two though, because he's been playing hot with these yep. serves, real loose with these serves. Okay, Will's get ready, about to Chris. do something really mad. wacky. Will's gonna throw up a lob <laughs> when he's never done that ever. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I I think that's to me I I th- maybe the open minded is a big thing because I just watch some partners at tournaments and like how negative we've played people like this where you can tell the person is getting down on their partner and I'm like if someone does that to me I'm probably checked out because at yeah. that point it's like dude I know I messed up you don't have to remind me I'm not trying to do that so it's like mm-hmm. you and I I think do a really good job of being like okay that didn't work Has it now not worked multiple times? Maybe let's try this. Or you know what? It was fine. You just missed it. Like, try it again. You know, I... Quick correction. You're good at doing that. You're good at telling me and letting me know. And then I'm like, (laughs) okay, I'll give it a shot. If it doesn't work, I'm driving the out of this ball. (laughs) (laughs) And that's what we do. That's that's true. Will, Will does really like to to drive the ball as much as he can but i don't know i think that that is why and similar with patrick i think we're both good at it's it's very similar vibes i think you and i probably get hyped up together a little bit more than me and patrick patrick's a little bit quieter but Mm -hmm. both of you very similar overall and i think that's why i like playing with you guys is 
it's comfortable. Like Obviously, it's my brother. Easy to be comfortable. You, we're just good I, friends. And yeah, I don't know. I'm surprised I'm, I'm you get along with time. your brothers that well. Just because, you know, I've seen some other siblings out on the court and they... <laughs> <laughs> you know they could be fighting at Thanksgiving is well is all I'm trying to say. <laughs> like yeah. you know, I'm just like dang, that sucks. Yeah, I I think we do a pretty good job overall. I don't think me and Patrick have ever gotten mad at each other on court. Like Patrick's probably been frustrated. I can think of maybe one or two games where I was a bit stubborn about something where he was like, "Hey, we should do this," and I was like, "No, I think if we do this, it's better." And I've since those I've gotten better at just being more open minded because usually when I go back and look, I can tell that I was just I was just being stubborn. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I'm glad we don't fight. I just don't think it's it doesn't benefit anyone. What are you going to accomplish in like a one minute fight on the court that will actually help you win the game? Probably nothing. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Probably nothing. Um Okay, so we've kind of developed and established the kind of personalities that we like. We both like someone who's chill, who is someone who's enjoying the game, open-minded, positive, gives positive feedback and body language. Not to say that, you know, you need to be happy and bubbly all the time. Like yeah. You can be upset and mad. Honestly, if you're upset and mad sometimes and you show that, but just don't make it, I don't know. Don't, don't, don't direct it at your partner. Yeah, don't direct it at your partner, and it's fine because that signals me is like, okay, something needs to change. You're not liking this. Maybe that's a time to call a timeout. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, to be a good partner, you have to read your partner and how they're feeling, and you have to take this into account and make better decisions so that you can pull your partner and your team and you out of the dumps and you know get back in the game and uh, win the match so be i think too really quick to it yeah it's important i think something that i try and think about is if if my partner misses something either they don't usually miss or they've missed a couple in a row just reminding them like i think we had a specific example in texas there was one match where like your two-handed drive from the baseline yeah. you just missed a couple in a row and i think just reminding your partner like it's fine because, like, you know, you'll start to get in your head and be like, maybe I shouldn't do that. But it's like, I know you. I know that's a good shot for you. And it's like sometimes just reminding your partner, like, no, you're good, dude. Like, I'm not mad that you missed it. Now, if you miss a bunch of them in a row, maybe be like, hey, let's try this instead. But I know that you like that shot and are good. So it's like, no, like, it's fine. Try it again. And I think you as a partner letting your partner know, hey, it's mm -hmm. fine, gives them yeah. more confidence. Because I think when you don't say anything, it's very easy for you to start imagining what your partner's thinking, and you just want to take uh, that out. Like, make it easy for them. Don't even let them get to that point of imagining. Thinking it, right, because it's all in your head, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe it is, maybe it's not, because some partners are like, no, it's in your head, but also I'm thinking that too. Like, <laughs> back end sucks. Like, don't yeah, do that anymore. Right. Right. You, know, right. you, know, you know what's the worst thing is that if if you're like the quote unquote mean person, like mean partner, like, oh my gosh, why'd you do that? You shouldn't have done that. You messed this up. And then that same person who says something bad, like dumps one at the net, like the next point, And it's like, you feel so bad. And then your yeah. partner who you just <laughs> yelled at or whatever, it was like, that's right. Told you so. Bitch. Yeah. Like, like yeah. That's, that's, yeah. <laughs> I see that <laughs> happening all the time. Like I, I have these, um, I guess these thought bubbles, like I'm, I'm mouthing what they're thinking or they're saying to each other. Like sometimes when I'm spectating and they're into an argument and I can't make out what they're saying, I imagine what they're saying in my head. And, yep. this, and that's a scenario that I see often. I'm like, oh man, they're going to hate each other after this. It's like, oh my, yep. I can't believe you missed that third shot drop. I'm going to kill you. Gosh. Dude, uh, once I start seeing people tilt like that in a tournament, I'm like, yeah, we got this. Like they're, they're done. I, it oh, just, really? When you see someone lose their mental state that bad, I just feel like it's a, to me, it gives me a lot more confidence. And I'm not saying I haven't been there. I've been there, you know, where I've probably like, you know, lightly tossed my paddle on the court or something where I'm like just getting frustrated with myself. And I also think in those situations, is it probably important to just let your partner know, like, I assuming you aren't actually, but like, look, I'm not mad at you. I just like, I'm mad that I'm missing this or whatever, and then blow your steam off and get back to focusing. But I think there's a lot of really small things that people can do just to be better partners that don't take a lot of effort, like just paddle tapping between points, like letting them know like, hey, like you got it. We're fine. Like, let's try this or whatever. I don't know. It just I feel like there's a lot of small things that add up. Yeah, no, I agree. OK, well, 
let's elaborate on this just a little bit more. So now that we know the personalities, right, that we like, let's go more into the play style. You yeah. know, like what 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 shots do you like your partner to have mm. that you think complements like how you play? If my partner has really good hands, I love that. And both you and Patrick have good hands, which is probably why I like playing with you. Because okay. okay. I don't think my hands are that great. I think it's probably one of my... It, for being 4-5, I think it's one of my weaker skills that still needs to be worked on. You're 4 and five? So, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Will. <laughs> but, but I feel like I am really good at keeping us alive or like resetting or dropping and like doing that. And then I don't mind my partner coming over and finishing things or starting a hand battle or like cleaning it up. Like that's great for me. And I can just reset for them. Hmm, okay, that's good. Let me see. I'm I'm trying to think this. Like, what shots do I like my partner to have? Honestly, uh, I like my partners to have <laughs> good drives because I love the shake and bake play. Like, mm -hmm. it's just fast, and it's just to me if you can perform it really well. Uh, and sometimes you might come out, uh, you know, on the receiving end on that. You know, if you do that play, but I feel like that play, if you get it right, is a good way to bring uh, you and your partner kind of, you know, uplifts you guys. Like, you know, if you guys are down or you need some energy on your side, a good shake and bake play is just, you know, just what the doctor ordered. It's quick, it's fast, it's easy. You get the adrenaline pump in, you get that dopamine hit. And I find that I play a lot better afterwards. And it's just kind of like a small win uh, for you and your partner to kind of build that that bond during that match and to just keep, you know, pushing through. So that's one of the shots I usually like my partner to have. Do you know what shot I apparently don't care if my partner doesn't have? Can you guess? Uh, if your partner doesn't have. No, <laughs> just I don't. Based on, because neither you or Patrick do this. Oh, apparently speed it's speeding up the ball because <laughs> I play with both of you and I like it, but I'm like, gosh, dang it. Why can't these guys just speed up the ball? Because I'm like, you both have great hands, so attack them and then clean it up really quick. <laughs> <laughs> I I just don't, I don't know what it is. I just don't practice it enough. Or I think I just don't know where the speed is coming back to. Although I have been, um, okay, I, I've been uh, practicing my shadow swings mm. up against the mirror. <laughs> like that, I have a full body mirror and I've been trying to work on my dink and my drive and slash my speed up to look more similar because Jordan has told me this and I've been practicing. I practiced it today in Wichita when I played at the minor league and it has worked quite a bit. I got a few clean like just winners off of the bounce, like the speed, up, the step back and you can't tell that I'm going to dink it or I kind of sped it up. But I don't know if it's called a speed up like because to me it seems slow. Mm. When I do when I do it, but I think people are just thrown off guard. I just pick a good spot, but it looks the same as the dink, and uh, it's been really effective. But you know that that makes sense. Yeah, that you don't care if your partner doesn't have a speed up. You can just be the speed up master, Chris. It's do you we'll clean do up. you know what I think it is? Because what? since you and Patrick both have good hands, and you both don't like to speed up, and I don't have great hands, and I like to speed up. Here's what I think it is. No. I think you guys don't feel the need to speed up because at some point when they do, you're confident enough in your hands that you're uh. like ready to do something with it. And since I don't feel as confident in my hands, I think I like to be the one I want to attack first and I have a better idea of where the ball might go rather than they get to attack me first. And it's one of the things that makes me feel more uncomfortable than other things. So I think that's why I end up doing it first. I see. No, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I just don't know. Here's the thing. I When I do a speed up, I know you're like in control, but a part of me feels like you're not in control. I feel like when I do a speed up, to me, it feels like a toss up. Like it's a 50 50. If they're good too, I'm like, okay. Like it could be anybody could win this exchange. And if I can't be involved in the speed up still, like let's say I sped it up and you're my partner and then the ball happens to go to you and you don't have to finish it, I feel that it was my fault because I sped it up maybe when I wasn't supposed to. But that could be just my lack of skill of choosing when to speed up and knowing when and where 
to speed up because I think I, I, I'm pretty accurate enough to speed up, you know, to certain spots, but you know, the outcome of it is just something that kind of scares me. And then I just feel guilty. And that's one thing I do not like, you know, I don't like to be making the mistakes. And honestly, I want, I, I think I play better when I know like my partner is kind of counting on me. And I feel like if I do that, sometimes I'm letting them down if we lose the exchange, yeah. which has happened before, you know? So, yeah. But, but speaking of speed, I want to talk real quick. Um, I have been kind of just watching more videos about speed ups and like I said, kind of just practicing in, in the mirror. But there was a video I recently watched where I, I found very interesting by an account called, uh, what was it called? Pickleball Burner. I think he... Oh, I've seen him popping seen up him? in my feed as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, he, he makes he makes some good videos. I like some of his videos, but he had one on the speed up. Uh, it's like the triangle and other people have talked about this as well, but his video was good. And he says, if you speed up to someone's... if they're if they're all right-handed, right? This is all considered they're right-handed. So speed ups make a triangle. So if you speed up to someone's backhand, most likely the place, like if I'm on the left side and I speed up to someone's backhand, let's say there's a person in front of me, I speed up to their backhand, right? Um, to their left hip or their left side and they hit a backhand. Most likely it's going to go to my right side or my partner because it, it's supposed to make like a triangle. And if you speed up to their forehand, right? And it's from my forehand side, it's going to go to my left, right? Yep. So it, it's coming down your line. Exactly. So it's like 80% of the time, it kind of makes a triangle. And I've been noticing that a lot more. And I think it's it's right because when it's so fast and if you disguise it well enough, if you're trying to just react to it, you kind of, you know, you, when you do the chicken wing, which is true, when you hit the chicken wing and you hit a backhand, it goes, you know, to your left typically. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So I don't know. I think understanding these patterns more will make it feel less of i guess a toss-up like a coin flip is what it feels like to me but i know it's not because the pros do it you do it and i mean i was watching my partner katie and she's been dinking and i don't know it's instinctively for her because i asked her i was like how do you know because sometimes she's dinking and then she does a speed up and she's she is waiting on her backhand um counter and i'm like how do you know she's like i'm not sure i just kind of do it's like a feeling and i'm like oh crap that doesn't help me <laughs> yeah you're like thanks for but nothing. keep doing it <laughs> yeah yeah that's right right so, that's right i don't know for sure well tell me about uh this team tournament because i'm sure some of that will come into play you've obviously played with katie you haven't yeah. played with austin tell me about just how yes. that was um uh katie and i i would say are a little bit more experienced although austin and jenny and his wife jenny were very they're, they're tall they're athletic they have good drives good backhands um they're very competitive so i really enjoyed that the energy was really good i was a little bit more muted and tired and it's because i didn't get the best sleep the night before i slept at their house i was on an air mattress they have two cats okay and i i, I have nothing against cats but in the middle of the night both their cats came to see me and wake me up <laughs> the first the small one was just hopped on my chest just starts sniff like it was very interesting to me and i woke up what the heck i just hear this sniffing sound he's like sniffing my nose my mouth my eyeball and there's like i was like what the heck eventually like it goes away i'm like all right that was interesting it's fine and now the big cat okay this cat was like twice the size it's kind of it was a thick it's a thick boy thick girl she comes on my chest okay just sit plops down and has the loudest her or snor it, it sounded like somebody snoring and i was like wow. what the heck and i wake up and it's just looking at me like it's green glowing eyes like, you know, like oh gosh and then all of a sudden i'm i'm lying straight and it's just pawing on my chin like the whole night uh, and i'm like, uh, like and I, that's Wah. funny and i'm like what the heck and then i was like okay eventually i was like okay, i have enough of this so i try to you know roll over so it'll get off of me and it does and it comes back on and then it like slept next to me and i'm like okay so needless to say, I'm a little tired you yeah. know, the next morning, but, you know, Austin brought the energy. Uh, he was a, a driver. I wouldn't say his drops are the best, but they're passable. And yeah, just, I was like, yo, just, just drive it if you feel it. And I let him play. Uh, I asked him, I was like, what side do you, is your strongest? He said, what side do you want to play? You're the, you know, you're a better player. And I was like, no, what side are you strongest at? He's like, I play left. I'm like, great. 
let's do this. And I said, just, I just let them drive and just see where they kind of go. And then, you know, I just played from there. A lot of shake and bakes, you know, we did get into some dink battles. Um, and I would just actually lean over a lot with the backhand just to block stuff back. And honestly, I just, I didn't, it was funny because, um, it was what we wanted because I was clearly, I think people noticed that I was the better player. So they would avoid me, but it was great because they would dink to him and he's playing the left side. I was like, okay, well, if something gets high enough, he's going to crush it. it. Exactly. Yeah. So it worked out great. Um, uh, we had a few tough matches when, when the teams, the, the teams that we played in the final, we played them in pools and they beat us just barely 3-1 in the finals. Um, we lost them again 3-1, but some of the other matches were close. But yeah, if the teams could kind of reset him, I think they could kind of outdink him. And it was tough for me to kind of insert myself into the thing. And by the time we tried to switch things up a little bit and do a little stacking, I think it was a little too late. Um, but yeah, no, it was great uh, playing with him. Overheads came through. I'm like, step out of the way. I was like, yep. And he's like six foot. So like, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that's Take nice. This. Take this. And it's kind of nice. I'm not going to lie because I don't really want to do too many overheads to be quite honest with you i was like yeah oh, it's tiresome totally but yeah totally yeah it was good we got silver um uh, and uh ching from wichita's uh you know held a pretty great event it was really cold in the morning but uh you know kind of warmed up throughout the day and honestly i was just out there just enjoying myself i can't quite remember what else i'm still like pretty tired it all felt like a big blur to me you know yeah yeah I can imagine. I mean, team tournaments, they run long. All the ones I've ever done in Minnesota, it's basically an all day venture is what it feels like. It's going to be the vast majority of my day. And they are, yeah. I think because energy is higher just with teammates, it's just, it's exhausting. Yeah, no, it is. I think my energy may have been higher if um, like I knew Jenny and Austin like better, but like it was fine. I, I think yeah. if I play with them again, you know, since we built some rapport, you know, I might have been, you know, I can be a little bit more, more hype, you know, but yeah, no, it was, it was a good event. I will say one thing though, I still need more experience. I think playing mixed and it's funny mm. because it, it should make the most sense, but I think mix is the most, it, it's kind of difficult, um, for me because you know you have to play more aggressive and which i i do do um but sometimes like going in and like reaching in reaching over it's just feels a little uncomfortable sometimes because i feel like i'm overdoing it and then mm. i feel like i'm out of position and honestly you know because i don't have i don't have a huge wingspan either so i feel like i'm sacrificing a lot and in my head i'm like okay what am i gaining here right? How do I get more involved? Um, I do find that, uh, for me at least, I have more success taking the third shot sometimes if I want to drive it, right? Because, yeah. you know, like they're trying to hit it to my partner, yep. right? And I mean, obviously this happened when I played with Katie and I played mixed today and I would go over a lot sometimes very far just to take a drive and I'm like, okay, now that I'm taking this, where should I hit it? That yeah. is the question. And I'm like, okay, should I hit it down the line? Because if I hit it down the line, it's more it's, it's more likely that I'll get the ball again because if they go cross court, that's yeah. to me. And they hit back down the line. I'm kind of still there and I can still make a play on it. But also at the same time, if they're good enough, I'm out of position. They hit it cross court. I'm, I'm smoked. I'm done. Like, how yep. am I going to get this back? Um, So I don't... I don't quite know, man. What do you do when you play mix? How often are you, you know, I mean, you did a whole video of like, you know, ball hog or smart. Go check it out if you haven't seen it already. But like, <laughs> dude, that the first, I just got to say the comments on that video were hilarious because there were just so many people that were like, I can't believe these women like playing with you. I can't believe you take this. I like this makes no sense. And I'm like, dude, I've been playing with Melissa for we're almost coming up we're probably getting pretty close to a year now. Mm -hmm. And like we, it's to me, it's like, as far as mix goes, such a perfect partnership. I love it. She knows what I want to do. 
I know what she can do. Like, everything just works out great. We know our strengths and weaknesses. We have got it dialed, especially against the team. It was just very funny to see all these comments that were like, it felt like they thought I was playing wreck with a stranger. I was like, yo, I would never do this in like with a, a stranger. Park. Yeah. Wait, like, wait, I need to pull this up now. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude, need... if you just if you just scroll through some of the comments, you'll you'll see some of them. And I knew okay. it was going to happen. It's it's mixed. That's just it always happens on a mixed video. But OK, anyways, mm-hmm. all of that to say, I definitely like to play aggressive. And with my partner, Melissa, she mm-hmm. is a reset monster. Like she will keep us in points. She will keep us alive. She can block like a machine, but she is not an aggressive player. Like I have to tell her all the time. I'm like, Melissa, again, this is the third person now. She never speeds up the ball. Never, never, even less than you guys, which is a miracle. Really? I didn't even know that was possible. So, <laughs> and then overheads, she just doesn't hit them very hard. Or if she does, like there's a very high chance it's coming back. So we've yeah. just decided like, Okay, I should hit those. Like, unless it's, you know, as far to the right as it can be. That that might not make sense. But anyways, so I like to play very aggressive. She can reset a lot, so I'm zooming all around the court. And I, I just want the other mixed partner to feel stuck. Like, I can't get away from this guy, or it's two on one. Even if I get away from him, his partner's hitting it right back to me. And now, do I want to go up the line and chance either an Ernie or the guy speeding it back up on me, or do I want to keep hitting to the small box to the other partner? Mm. And that that's what I'm thinking about. It doesn't always work out that way. Sometimes the other mixed partner is perfect at hitting that tiny little box. And now I can't do anything. Like I can't come over and I've experienced this a couple times. And then I just get confused. I'm like, I don't know how to help you. And Melissa's like, I need help. Like I can dink, but I can't hit 20 dinks in a row before the other guy comes and does something so if they're good at that it's tricky i see okay yeah i'm just not uh too sure i think i just need to take up yeah more court and try to take stuff out of the air kind of dink i guess middle or maybe even closer to down the line when i come over and take it like dink it to the other guy across because then most likely i don't know he won't dink down the line again so there's a, there's a greater likelihood that they'll dink cross court just yes. so i can touch another ball i guess but yeah, i will say uh, if you do come over tough. really far like you're yeah. pretty out of position up the line is definitely the play because again you probably will see the ball if you don't pop it up and they can't do anything aggressive whereas if you're way out of position and go back to usually the female if they're on the yeah, right they'll hit it down the line they might hit it down the line which I actually don't mind that sometimes too because sometimes I'm trying to bait them into that because I'm quick. So I'll come back like ready for them to do that and try and hit it. It doesn't always work, but that is another thing I'm thinking about, which is a way to see the ball again or try and do something with it. I see. Do you lob during your mixed matches or no? Uh, It depends a lot on the person. Like It depends on how good either of their overheads are. I do like lobbing in general. Um but yeah, it just it really depends on the the team. Like if I know the guy is a monster overhead and he's really quick, I might avoid that just because I don't want to get pounded by hitting a bad lob. Mm, okay, makes sense. But it's funny that you don't like it because one of the reasons I love mixed is to me it is by far the most predictable format in pickleball. Both of the other team they're gonna try and hit it to your mixed partner more yeah. than likely, which means you kind of know where to go or what to try and cut off because you know where they're going. In men's, I'm like, they can go to either of us. I don't know what they're going to do. True. I think it's not that I don't like it. I think it's just that I'm not as experienced in it. Sure, that's fair. And even when I play mixed, like recreationally, we're still hitting to both. We're not not really trying to like compete. To play mixed. It to play mix the way that is being played right now to ice each other out as if it yep. was a you know a tournament match or something right so yep. I think it's just the lack of experience and even when I play mix and rec a lot of times we're not stacking right yeah. we're right and I'm we're playing straight up sometimes we'll stack but yeah we're playing straight up so you get a lot of different looks etc so I think if I want to get better in mix I'm just I need to play it more, or at least compete in it more, or tell the people playing Rex, like, "Hey, I'm, I'm really trying to like play this, you know, like to win this, and, like, and to destroy you, <laughs> you know." Yeah. So I will say uh, I do think that's harder 
mixed is one of those ones where when you're practicing, you really got to make sure everyone's on the same page because if you're going to play that way, it usually can, means the guys are going to see less balls than normal. And yeah, that's why you, if you're going to set it up, you have to be like, yeah, we're practicing for a tournament. Like both teams are aware of this and, you know, you go in with that mindset. So you, so you do this a lot then, it seems like, because, you know, obviously you play a lot of mixed, it seems like. I wouldn't say we do it a lot, but there's just enough people that play mixed here and that I see regularly enough when I'm with Melissa that it's like, that's probably just how we're going to play anyways. Like me and Melissa, when we play, we always stack. Like it's just our default way mm -hmm. of playing. Uh, and then, you know, there's some other mixed teams here that we see pretty regularly. So it just kind of, it kind of works itself out. But if it's someone I have not, like I don't see that often or they're not my mixed partner, I never assume we're going to stack in rec play. Like I'll just assume I'm going to the other box because I think it's yeah. fairly presumptuous if you're, it's someone you don't see often to assume uh -huh. you're going to stack. Um, and I actually think mixed is another one where a uh, partner chemistry is super important. Like Melissa and I yeah. played in a team tournament and mm -hmm. we just hit it off immediately. Like we, you could just tell within our first couple games, we we're like, Oh, this just makes sense. Like she knew what I wanted to do. I knew what she wanted to do and we loved it. And I think especially if a guy's going to come and play so aggressive, you have to know that your partner is okay with that and that that's what they want. Like, Melissa, we were talking about the comments on my video. She was like, yeah. these are so funny to me because this is what I want you to do. Like, I would be unhappy <laughs> if you stayed in your box the whole time. So oh, I, man. that's where I think the chemistry for Mixed is just, like, really important. And you see it. Some of the pros, like, you know, like, I've seen Jesse Irvin with, like, AJ Kohler. AJ Kohler comes over and does something dumb and you can tell she's like, yeah, I could have hit that third. Like, please let huh. me hit that third. <laughs> okay. All right. Fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. Indeed. Uh, well, I think we covered that pretty well. I think you've got one thing you want to go over before we get to the kitchen here. Yeah. Go ahead. Bring it to no, the you kitchen. Have, Wait, do I, I do no, I want to have that? No, you have one kitchen? more thing. Yeah. No, I before do? the kitchen. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Before the kitchen. I did want to talk about, I mean, just give me a shout out to my buddy, uh, Levy from ADV Tennis. He, uh, came through he's a fellow um you know dc northern virginia um uh, cambodian tennis player who i like for the years the 30 years that i live in the dc northern virginia area have never met even though i played tennis heavily uh but he said he was you know he was living overseas he was living in atlanta and whatnot but he, he calls northern virginia his home but um i've been following him for a while and he makes really high premium quality tennis bags and i've always wanted one even when i was playing tennis i, I saw it as, oh man i want one of these but it was just really expensive right and uh we have a few mutual friends i asked one of them to like, link me up and i had his email his contact for the longest time i never reached out to him because i was just so busy and then one day he reached out to me and i was like what what's up and then he actually came he is uh you know he's building another you know sub brand or part of his business he's started playing pickleball he loves pickleball and uh, he built a prototype and he wanted to meet me. So he, he flew out here literally for a day just to meet me, show me the bag. He gave it to me. I used it today. Um, really good bag. Some interesting features uh, that I can't wait to share with you guys. Um, and uh, he wants it specifically for like pickleball. And yeah, so he just came through. He showed me we got to play some pickleball. We got to, you know, play some games. Um, uh, he showed me some materials and some of the designs and the prototypes. And it's just it's just kind of really cool to see when somebody takes an idea and, you know, brings it into, you know, fruition. Like, you know, creating prototypes, like pictures of the box cutouts that he made to show what it takes. You know, it's a lot of work to go into R&D. And I, I'm sure not just for bags, but for anything, like some of these companies out there that are making paddles and uh, making other equipment and gear. Uh, just being part of that process is really cool. And I'm really excited to kind of just, you know, see how it goes. Um, so yeah, that's really it, man. Shout outs to Levy from ADV Tennis for coming through, playing some pickleball and, you know, stepping into the game, you know? Yeah, for sure. I'm excited to see the bag and See what it's like. There are a lot of bags in pickleball right now, and largely they are all the same thing. I've been using yes. my carbon bag, and before that it was the Monarch bag, which I thought was great for the price, but carbon bag is a little bit better for me now. So, yeah, curious to see it. 
yeah yeah oh yeah i'll show it to you eventually maybe in another episode or something we should we'll, we'll do one we'll go through some of our favorite favorite bags or another thing of like what's in our bag but podcast form i know you made a video about it before of like what's in your bag but you know yeah. how you travel you know yep. with what's in your bag i think that'd be interesting right let us yeah. know in the comments below if that's something that you guys might potentially want to see because it's very yeah. different for us and from person to person and what the needs of people are uh you know how many paddles do you carry how do you carry all these paddles what snacks do you carry do you bring a chair how big are your water bottles do you bring two yeah. do you bring a huge you know two gallon one and how do you carry that through the airplane when you're traveling it's just you know totally it's cumbersome for sure no it is definitely cumbersome <laughs> for sure okay. all right well we've officially made it to the kitchen and now will this is kind of i know you haven't done this so it's probably going to be just a lot of me talking but also i think there's probably i imagine probably applies to me you'll have yeah i mean it'll yeah and i think you'll have questions about it so if there's anything that you feel like i don't explain well i'm sure people mm -hmm. in the audience will also have the same thought so feel free yeah. to just bounce it off but yeah uh i just want to talk about this real quick guys because i have been able to fly free this entire year and my wife has also been able to fly free with me and she will get to fly free with me again for the entirety of 2024 for free unlimited amount of flights and I will run out of points for mine to be free, but then you know we're still getting two flights uh, for the price of one, and that's through Southwest. So I'm going to, if you haven't done this before, it's called the Southwest Companion Pass. I'll leave a link in the description that explains how you can do it. Basically, you, I'm gonna give the broad overview. Basically, you open some credit cards, you hit the bonus on it, you get the bonus points, and if you get enough bonus points in a certain time frame. Southwest gives you what's called the companion pass. And then you have all these points racked up that you can book your flight with. And then that companion gets to fly with you free from whenever you hit that bonus to the end of the year and mm -hmm. then the following year. So the way to do this is if you get the bonus in January of a year, that means you get it for all of that year and then the following year. So if you got it in November, you would only get it through to December and then the following year after that. So it's better if you get it in January is the long story short, if you want to maximize it. Um, and that's why I'm bringing it up now, because right now is the time you should start looking to this if you want to have all the bonuses cleared by January. So keep that in mind. I've, I waited a couple years to do this and I kept forgetting. So that's why I thought I'd mention it on this pod. But anyways, I'm also going to put this disclaimer here because this is extremely important. Do not do this if you are poor at managing money or you have bad credit. Like, it, it, turn this podcast off. Stop listening. <laughs> you should not do this. If you if you view a credit card as, like, you don't have to pay it off at the end of the month, do not do this. This is for people who are in, like, good financial situations and can manage credit cards. This will only get you in trouble if you are already bad at managing credit cards. I have mm. now said my disclaimer. I'm no longer responsible for this. <laughs> People are going to be yeah. like back in the comments, Chris, you messed up my credit. Nah. No, nope. I did my part. I gave the disclaimer. Uh, also, you should probably have a credit score of 700 plus. That's not mandatory, but highly recommended because applying for the credit cards is easier when you have more credit. Anyways. Now I'll go over uh, mm -hmm. the details of this. I guess before we do that, Will, do you have any questions so far? No, it sounds like an incredible deal. Now, here's the thing, though. I know it gets a flight for you and a companion. What yes. if you don't have a companion? Like, where does that... Can you change the companion? Like, what if you don't have somebody? Is it still worth it to do? Um, it... Yeah. Hmm. It could be. So if you don't have a companion... I would just it's also what this is usually called is called credit card churning, which is where like you open a credit card, you get the bonus points so you can travel and then, you know, you can close the card later or downgrade it. Usually closing it is not recommended. It's better to downgrade it so it doesn't hurt your credit. If you're a single person, just look into like chase credit card points because that's the best some of the best credit card points you can earn. And then the companion pass you can save for when you do have someone. You can change the companion. So if I wanted okay. to change it to Isaac, I could do that. But I think you're limited to doing that two times in one year. So usually you want to reserve this for 
like a spouse or significant other or sibling or okay. someone who's going to travel a lot with you. If yeah. not, it's still probably worth it because you're going to get a lot of points that you can travel with for free, but better if you have a companion. Got it. Okay. Good to know. Yep. Good to know. All right. For sure. All right. So here's the deal, guys. To get the companion pass, you have to earn 135,000 Southwest points in a year. And the easiest way to do that is by opening two credit cards that are Chase branded Southwest cards. You have to open a Chase Southwest personal card and a Chase Southwest business card. The okay. business is a little bit more complicated, but we'll go over that. It's not as bad as people think. So you have to get 135,000 points and the, the personal cards, they give you 50,000 points if you hit the bonus, which is spend $1,000 in three months. So most adults, that's probably going to be easy. very easy. You're going to do that in a month. Like health insurance, groceries, I mean, whatever. You're going to hit that, no problem. So 51,000 points because you also get a, the money you spend on the card you get as points. So 51,000, knocked out, cakewalk. Mm -hmm. Okay, that one's easy. The business card, you don't have to have like a legal LLC to do it. Like if you are a babysitter a freelance photographer, a freelance blogger, a dog, if walker, you're a, a dog walker, a content teach creator. Teach pickleball lessons on the side. You know. Yep. Like all of that would qualify. Like if you're a sole proprietor, which basically means you run a side hustle, but you don't have an LLC, you can still apply for this. Now, they will usually ask how much your business produces in income. And I don't know how much they base denying or approving you off of that because I've always had an actual business. So I've never had mm -hmm. to worry about that. But... There are tons of people on like the r slash churning subreddit that are like, yeah, I don't have a real business, but like I still get these. I probably wouldn't push it if you don't have a real business, but if you do have a side hustle, you're probably fine. Okay, mm -hmm. the business card, after you spend 4,000 in three months, which is not too hard. I think most people can do that. And if you can't, just offer to like buy your family's groceries, have them venue, Venmo you back. Um, there's lots of different things. And also, please only spend money that you are going to spend. It it stops being worth it if you're spending money to hit the bonus that you wouldn't have spent otherwise. If you're like, yeah, I'm going to go buy a new MacBook that I don't need, yeah, that <laughs> like you just defeated the whole purpose of the free flights because now you bought something you didn't need. Another uh -huh. disclaimer. We'll throw that out. <laughs> okay. um, but, but anyways, 80,000 points. So now 51,000 plus the 80,000 and the $4,000 that you spent on the card. Congrats. You're now at 135k points and you now get all those bonus points. So it's really not that hard. Literally, it's opening two credit cards that you want to open a month apart from each other. Don't open them at the same time. That's bad. So you'd want to open the personal one and then the business one a month later. And that's why you really want to start looking at this now because if you want to have all that spending done by January, Doing two cards, $5,000, it can be a little tricky for some people. Yeah. Any questions okay. so far, Will? No, I don't. It makes, you know, clear, cut, and dry. And if you have problems, yo, look up at the article that Chris will most likely put in the show notes so you can do this for yourself and your future pickleball partner or your current pickleball partner or, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever, yeah. <laughs> Whoever. <laughs> yeah, I, it's really not that complicated of a process as long as you're you know good at managing money and like you know it, it's a good way to travel for free extensively and not have to pay extra for it like my trip in january uh that i'm taking to hawaii pretty much that entire trip is paid for in points our hotel our flight um our rental car might be our our honeymoon when we also went to hawaii was done with credit card churning so like mm -hmm. as long as you do it responsibly, it's a great way to travel for free. And I know there's a lot of people going to PPA tournaments. I know there's a lot of couples doing <laughs> it. Well, shoot, it'll be really good if, you know, you get a free flight and then, you know, PPA or MP decides to change the venue last minute so you can switch it up <laughs> without hopefully less cost to you. So it doesn't hurt nearly as much. So yes, there's that. that's that is right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I guess that's really all there is to it. Um Again, credit score over 700. Be responsible. Uh, don't do it if you don't pay off your credit cards. If you're in credit card debt, please don't do this. It is not worth it. Trust me. It Don't do it if you have debt. Um, but if you don't have debt, 
great thing to do. And uh, you know what the great thing is, Will? Sarah and I will uh-huh. actually get four years of free travel pretty much four? because it's- How? Yeah. Because once I'm done, I did all the bonuses myself. And then once that runs up, I'm going to have her do the same exact thing. Wow. And then add me as her companion. So, oh, one other important thing. If you do this, your uh, companion has to be on the flight with you when you fly. So, like, if they live in another state, you can't just, like, book a flight for them and then they oh. fly there for free. Got to be. So, you and say. I right now, we couldn't do that. But if you're in Minnesota. Okay, I was about to say. We could do yeah. it. Think, yeah, so think well, about just, this. You then what you do. You could move there. Yeah. Yeah, after my four years are up, you move here, you get the bonus, and then you and I are partners and we fly all around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm bringing Isaac. Yeah. No, oh, no, the pain. <laughs> 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 Not my brother. That's funny. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think that's pretty much all I got. I just thought it'd be a, a fun little tip for people if they can get it done in time but you got yeah. anything else you want to go over before we wrap it up uh no nah, man i think that's it i'm pretty beat from today in the pod i'm ready to go knock out and uh i'm i mean i got work to do i, I see you in like what four days and Dude, it's, oh my gosh it is four days it's that's next crazy. weekend yeah this yeah, coming we have weekend Duper nationals next week oh we'll go over this really quick yeah i told you this but the audience should know this Jamin and his brother AJ are in our bracket at Duper Nationals. Oh. So we might have a rematch of our gold medal match. At least that's what I hope it is because that would be awesome if we played them a third time this year. Okay. All right. We'll see what happens. Hopefully we'll do better this time. Maybe we'll play them earlier in the round. We'll oh, see. I'm telling you right now, we're yeah. studying up. I'm, oh, we're yeah. going to go study what the, some of the odds were that we should have been playing in the other match because... <laughs> I'm not losing a third time to them. <laughs> okay, okay. Third time's the charm. Third time's third. the charm, baby. Third yeah. time's the charm. If you guys charm. are at Duper Nationals uh, in uh, Dallas or in Rockwall. Is it Rockwall, right? It's at it Oasis. It's Rockwall. Yeah, it's at the Rockwall, Oasis. Texas. If you're there, come say what's up to us. We'd love to meet you, per usual, as always. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, thanks for watching, everyone, and we'll catch you next week. All right. Peace. Peace.